Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the head witch of Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in with me once again. Today we're going to be doing a divine feminine reading. We're going to be connecting with our divine feminine nature to see what we need any imbalances, any messages, things to help the divine feminine continue to unfold, heal, to thrive. For those of you guys that don't understand divine feminine reading, it can be directly towards an actual feminine energy or presence in your life. It can also represent the feminine energy within yourself, regardless of your gender, your identity. Each and every single one of us has divine feminine energy within us. It's the parts of ourselves that are naturally nurturing, that are abundant, that are creative, that are magical and mystic. This is the part that I wish to serve for you now. All tarot cards that I'm working with and oracle cards will be listed below in the description box. And the candle that I'm working with, the fixed candle that it is that I decided to work with, here is available in my shop. And it is um, the Bird of Paradise candle, fixed candle, fixed with herbs to open up Divine Feminine Energy. So let's go ahead and dive into these energies. Spirit, I thank you for your presence. I call out to you now for clarity, for direction and guidance, for divine feminine energy. What is it that needs to be seen, heard, and understood at this moment in time? Protect the viewer and bless the viewer as well as protect and bless me while we're doing this reading. Okay, divine feminine. So even though this is the last card to be pulled, I actually ask that this be the overarching message, the over overarching theme of what it is that we need to address for Divine Feminine. As you can see, it's the Five of Pentacles. This is energy that feels cold, abandoned, isolated, left out, lack, lacking in some way. I'm also kind of, I don't know why I feel like I'm concentrating on the candle flame that she's holding. She's holding this candle flame and for her it represents something. I believe what I'm hearing and what Spirit's showing me is someone who works really hard to keep the candle flame burning, to keep the candle flame going. And Divine Feminine, you are being called to remember that Sometimes it's not your duty to keep things going. Sometimes it's not your duty to constantly be working or constantly be adding like fire, like adding wood to the fire to make sure that it burns. It's almost as if you have convinced yourself or that society or someone else has convinced you that this is your role, your responsibility or your legacy is to keep the fire going but I'm at, I, I heard Spirit saying, what would happen if it would go out? Some of you guys actually feel like your survival or the survival of something relies on you keeping this going. And Spirit is saying that this is not your duty to keep this flame going. It's not your duty to keep tending to this fire. Now, for those of you guys that don't understand, tarot works a lot in metaphors. So it'll say something or use a story or use an example, but it's not actually literal. I want you to envision what this fire may represent for you, what this flame, what this candle, what this campfire represents for you. And why does it feel like you're the only one tending to this fire? Why does it feel like you're the only one contributing to this fire? Or what would happen if you did decide to let it go? What would happen if you did decide to step back and let this candle burn out, if it even would? 
do you trust that this candle or do you trust that this flame will continue to burn on its own? Or is your soul existence going to be you tending to it and adding to it? And do you even have the resources and the energy to continue to keep this going? As I'm talking to you, this candle here is beginning to light up. This candle is interesting that I chose this. This is the Bird of Paradise candle. And basically it connects a lot to our ability to enjoy our lives, to feel like we are abundant and thriving and creative. And the things that it is that we do are worth it and valuable. It really does also connect to solar plexus and sacral chakra energies. Spirit is really talking about productivity as I look into the, the light of this candle. It's talking about productivity because it says, do you feel like you constantly have to produce and what you're producing, do you feel like it's enough? Is it okay for you to step back and just let the flame burn, let the fire burn? Some of you guys are so afraid, so terrified that if you take your hands off this thing, that it'll shrivel up, that the flame will grow low and dim. But the truth is, is that you, you're diminishing the light itself. You're, you're diminishing yourself by thinking that your light enough or what you've created can't sustain itself all on its own. I do get this strong sense of protective energy. And Divine Feminine is the natural mother within every single one of us. Again, regardless of your gender, regardless of your identity, it's the natural mother that shows up within every single one of us. It wants to nurture, but it also wants to protect. But we have to understand as Divine Feminine energies that there does come a time and place where we have to fall back and we have to allow ourselves or what we've created or what we are growing or what is valuable to us, we have to kind of let it be free to choose the direction that it goes, to grow in the direction that it wants to grow in. It can't be hands-on all the time. In fact, you have the Emperor here and the Strength card here. These are cards that represent the, the desire, this animalistic um, nature within every single one of us that wants to protect what we have worked so hard to secure, that wants to protect so hard what we've been working for, or working towards, or working on. This thing could be ch our children, this thing could be our businesses, it could be our relationships, or lack thereof. It could be a project, it could be a conversation. There's something that is, is being pulled into your existence right now, Divine Feminine that is highlighting a sense of insecurity within you, that's calling into question, you know, does this have what it takes to survive? And if it doesn't, why, you have to ask yourself why it's so important for you to ensure its existence when, or ensure that it stays alive or ensures that it's thriving in the way that you want it to thrive, in the way that you see it to, to grow and to, and, and to fruit. Because the truth is, is that if something isn't strong enough all on its own to survive, it might not necessarily be worth it to survive or there might be some type of dysfunction or there might be something wrong with it or something that it's just important for you to let go so that it can find its way. And do you trust that it'll be able to do that? The emperor shows up with the strength card. And it's interesting that the emperor showed up in this reading because this is divine feminine energy. If anything, this is the empress energy that should be showing up here, but we have the emperor. So this is highlighting even more your, your, your desire and this feeling that you have, this really strong feeling, this undeniably strong feeling that wants to protect and wants to fight for and wants to destroy anything that comes close to that which you love. But the interesting thing about the strength card is that this, our, our strongest signs of strength are not in our brute force or us forcing our will, but sometimes the strongest 
example or the way that strength shows up is our ability to let go and our ability to allow things again to choose its path and knowing emotional and intuitive wisdom within you that knows that like what you are and who you have here and if it's worth it it will grow it will advance it will thrive it will figure it out it'll figure itself out eight of wands is as soon as you tap further into your feminine energy you're going to get a strong sense a strong message or a strong sign of what is to come and it'll come in fiery we have page of wands here this card is very, very fast, and the Eight of Wands is even faster. As soon as you kind of let go and, and trust and watch, which can be very, very hard to do, you'll get an, an interesting call and response. You'll, you'll see how, it, how it'll pan out. You'll see if it's going to be, you know, stable on its own and will survive on its own, or if it's just not meant to or if it'll shrivel up. The next few cards that we have here are the Three of Pentacles and the Fool card. Spirit is really wanting to remind you that if it's just you carrying all of the weight of this, or if it's just you that wants this outcome, if it's just you that's working towards this outcome, and what you've done so far is not enough, then maybe it's time to explore a different path or to consider the fact that there might be something else better out there for you. Some of you guys are really waiting for something to come in to confirm and reassure you of something that you already know within you. But spirit doesn't want you to put all of your energy into making this one thing happen when that energy that you're pushing in to make this work could make five other things work on this side that are of greater value or have what it takes to to survive and have longevity and to be thriving and to be abundant the main message that it is that i'm getting here is that all of these fears are realistic because there's something that you are experiencing right now, but also realize that they might be coming from a space of insecurity and doubt. And that is fueling your hesitation. And that is fueling your inability to be able to see how good the future can be for you. Or the fact that there might be something else out there better for you. Sometimes we get so caught in trying to make this one thing work that we're not able to see other opportunities or we're not able to see how taking our hands off of this and allowing it to flow where it'll flow will ultimately kind of lead into the direction that it's meant to go and it works out in everyone's best interest. So I'm gonna shuffle some more cards here. Please let me know down in the comments if this is resonating so far. If you want to, if you don't have any words, you can leave a heart or an emoji or a thumbs up. Um, you can thumbs up this video because it really does feel good for me to see that. So Spirit is saying right away, King of Swords upright, Three of Wands reverse. Try not to spend so much time in your logic in order to predict this outcome and or to predict what is going to happen next i think because emotionally you might be um i don't want to say clouded but you might be convinced because of your emotions right now of the outcome of something that will cloud up your judgment and your rational thinking so try not to spend too much time staying in your head trying to figure out how is this going to pan out what is going to be my return in this what can i get back and get back from this try to disconnect yourself from it i'm also hearing that a third like the, the people around you like third parties will be able to really tell you or have already told you what you can expect from this outcome 
usually I don't take into consideration what other people say, but spirit is, is referring to the fact that others might know or others might have already told you what to expect. It's just you choose not to believe it. These people have a very um, upfront way of talking about things, so they don't really sugarcoat stuff. They just kind of say, listen, I don't see this panning out or you've done this a million times before like don't you're expecting a different outcome or this is in their character or this is in their nature or you need to go to a doctor you know what I mean like there's a king of I just really get a strong sense that someone has already told you or a few people have already told you what to expect from this outcome I think maybe now's a time to kind of listen to a part of that um also, Queen of Wands showed up here and also Five of Wands reversed. And this is totally about honoring your passionate side. It's about honoring what exactly what it is I said in the very beginning of this reading that what you've created is already enough. Some of you guys really need to hear that you're not in competition with anyone but yourself. There's sometimes there's this strong need when we tap into this Five of Pentacles energy where we need to be reaffirmed or reassured of what we're creating or what we've done or am I a good mother or am I a good artist or whatever the case is and or you compare yourself you look at what other people are doing and how other people's lives what they're living and the truth is is that this is your life and this is your authentic journey queen of wands here what you do and what lights you up and what makes you passionate and the path you choose to lead is very valuable and very powerful. And it shouldn't be compared to anyone else because no one else can walk in your shoes and no one else can understand your steps or take the steps the way that you do. Those steps are uniquely your own and your passion and your personality and your purpose are, are distinctly yours. So try not to compare yourself to what other people are doing right now. Because the truth is, is that if we thought about this from a rational perspective, what we're seeing when we look out into the world is a fraction of the reality. And King of Swords would be the first one to tell you that. King of Swords would be the one to tell you, take off those rose colored glasses and see the fact that this is Instagram, you know, that you're looking at to compare yourself to your reality. They're apples and oranges, they're so different. And half of the time it's an illusion. So that's a very specific message for someone, but try not to compare yourself to what other people are doing because not only can they not relate, but your story is going to be so distinct your own. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some of the Oracle cards that I've pulled for us, the Divine Feminine Energies here. Yeah, we have the Medicine Woman. You are a channel for divine healing power. This goes to show that this is a moment, an opportunity. If you really did tap into your divine feminine energy nature, and if you are tapping into your the infusing energy and healing into your solar and sacral, um, uh, solar plexus and sacral chakra, your feelings of self worth. Um, I just heard this, I just heard spirit say the word abandonment. So some of you guys might be healing abandonment issues and abandonment wounds. Um, if you think about it, the umbilical cord goes right into the belly button. This is our ability to be nourished by something. So, um, a nourished by substance. So maybe use some time to work on those spots within yourself that feel abandoned, that feel isolated, that feel like they need validation and nurturing and support. I don't actually see this in you staying wrapped up and cocooned in your life. I don't know why Spirit wants to talk about that specifically, but Spirit's actually telling you about getting outside and venturing out, getting the sun on your skin, grounding yourself, centering yourself, feeling fresh air, and actually being active in your creativity or your creation being physical, it's going to give you life. It's actually going to nourish you faster than if you are only doing salt baths and only making yourself look beautiful or taking photos or whatever the case is. It's really about getting out. Look, wow, guys. It literally says go outside. This is exactly what I've been saying. It says you've been indoors too long. Go outside and get some fresh air. 
Mother Earth herself does not ever question or second guess the beauty of what she's growing, even when it becomes imperfect. If Mother Earth compared herself to Mars or Venus, she would say, I'm not hot enough, or my, oxy my oxygen levels are too balanced. I should be frying life, not s sustaining it. But the truth is, is that Earth is such a beautiful place for us as human beings to have, to, to, um, to inhabit. Does that make sense? It's such a beautiful place for us to live here. If Mother Earth tried to change any aspect of herself because she compared herself to Mars or Venus, we would all be fried here. This is a beautiful place. The same thing is true for you. Do not compare yourself to other planets. Do not compare yourself to other people. Do not compare yourself to other realities. Everything that you are growing and that you are contributing here and what you just not who you naturally and effortlessly are just you being who you are is perfect and divine in nature so embody um, earth energy embody earth magic by immersing yourself in it and being inspired by how effortless she grows how abundant she provides asking nothing in return except respect for some of you guys, you really need to remove yourself out of places where you're being disrespected. Yeah, inner wisdom. It says, you know what to do, trust your inner wisdom, and take appropriate action without delay. This is exactly the vibe that I was feeling and sensing, that for a lot of you guys, this... It's interesting that the owls here, I don't actually see you shying away from the world. I don't see you hiding yourself or isolating yourself in a, in a cabin or in your bedroom or away from the world. I, I see this as a very active period. I'm also hearing that for some of you guys, don't allow anybody to stop you from venturing out or going the journey. I'm hearing go the journey alone. So basically you might need to be doing a trip or travel um, or making a decision based upon what's in your best interest, not taking other people into account or consideration. I don't know why I'm getting this message of two, two messages here. Let's say you got accepted into a college. This is a metaphor, but maybe it could be literal. Let's say you got accepted into a college and your best friend and your boyfriend are going to this one university and you got accepted to this other university. Everyone, including your family, is saying go to this university and you would like to be able to honor their opinions, but the truth is, is that you feel called to move out of state and venture out on your own. You are not gonna be isolated and taking those steps. However, you will be venturing away from the places that it is that you naturally have already belonged to in order to find a new space that is that you belong. And in that place, you'll be far more successful, have way more opportunities, and actually be enriched instead of staying in your hometown and staying with the same friends. Those same friends, yeah, maybe you might evolve and, and grow in different directions, but if it's meant to last, if those friendships and those connections are strong enough and meant to last, then they will be there when you come back home. But don't allow what other people are saying to stop you from venturing out on your own behalf. So take that example and put, and apply it where it met, um, where it resonates, you know, where it applies. So the next few cards, we have um, the Divine Mother. Unconditional love exists within me. The presence of love is the absence of judgment. Exactly. For some of you guys, I don't want you, and Spirit doesn't want you, to second guess your own judgment, second guess your intuition, or second guess your own creation. In fact, Spirit wants you to, Divine Feminine, lean into nurturing what you have already created, your intuition, and your higher wisdom and knowledge and knowing. The next card we have here is the goddess of never not broken. It says everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. Exactly. This says that we have to really accept the quote unquote broken pieces and aspects of ourselves. If we embrace those broken parts, we can't continue to break because if we're it's just our innate natural being. Like if we embody the quote unquote brokenness, we're not actually broken, We've, we're whole. It's kind of like a cat, not a cat 22, it's kind of like a mind, you know, you gotta think meta with that. But it's, you have, 
there's nothing wrong with you. Embrace everything that you think is odd about you or embrace the creative process or embrace the fact that you're different and go for it, venture out. That's what is happening here. Everything is happening for your liberation. You are breaking free from certain thought patterns, certain legacies, certain lifestyles and patterns. And by breaking free and breaking open, you're actually becoming more whole and you will find and discover that you were never broken to begin with. That's a very powerful message. Interesting, we have the alchemist here next to the medicine woman. You are a channel for divine healing power. You can use these energies right now to speak life into yourself, to speak life into your circumstances, to speak life into your creation, and to speak life into your life. You can do this through magic, for example, the fixed candles, the oils, the herbs, the, the candle, um, I already said that, like fire, alchemy, you can use that. So do it. Then we have the jester here. This card was also reversed. This is sometimes having a strong sense of humor as we approach life and how odd it can be and awkward it can be and also uncomfortable. Sometimes laughing makes things a little bit better and finding joy um, in past memories or in the present actually is very, very healing. And this is again, um, sacral chakra type of energy is finding joy in things. The other thing that I really want to caution you against is laughing at your own intuition and diminishing through jokes um, the power of your intuition, the power of what it is that you've created. For example, let's say that there's people who are like, oh, here she goes with her visions again. And you're just like, yeah, I know, I just like, Spirit wants you to take your visions very seriously and don't allow anybody to disrespect what you're creating and don't speak disrespect over what is it you're creating. I don't know why that's a specific message for someone to hear right now, but Spirit is getting a strong sense that you are... Um, when you... Like, it's okay to laugh at things, but also don't... Don't be a, the, don't be a clown. Don't... Don't tip so far into the imbalance of laughter that you are treating yourself or talking to your gifts or talking about your creation or allowing anyone to clown you or clown what is unique uniquely yours or a gift that's a very specific message i hope i said that correctly yeah the advocate this is about really jumping in getting hands getting hands on rolling your sleeves up and getting active again i don't feel you guys isolating yourself or pulling away from the world I actually see you pulling into a new world and starting a new venture and really taking yourself seriously and beginning to create and finding joy and pleasure in your life again also there's a strong message about um, creativity and productivity sometimes when we create something we feel like we have to modernize it or turn it into something we like product, we, we turn creativity into a product and spirit is kind of telling you like at this moment in time, like what if you just allowed yourself to enjoy the pleasure of this leisure activity and you didn't profit off of it or you didn't turn it into something that's like a nine to five. What if it's just something that gave you joy? I don't know why that's also coming through. So let's see what these cards are. We have illusion, we have time and we have forgiveness. So I just, first things first that I'm hearing is time is an illusion, which we all know. Um, I'm also hearing that you have time to create. I'm also wanting to remind you that everything flows in its own divine time. And anything that, the, what you might be trying to force and fight to, into existence is your illusion is you trying to convince yourself of the illusion that something is other than what it is. If you saw it for the value and if you saw it for what's worth, what makes it worth it, then you wouldn't have to convince yourself of this illusion that everything is working out. You would just automatically assume and know that this is working out because it's worth it or because it's valuable or whatever the case is. To try to force something means that you're feeding the illusion versus feeding the reality. Feeding the illusion is that if I let go of this, it will fall apart, it will crumble, it won't work out, or 
feeding the illusion would be if I create this, then I have worth or value when the truth is, the reality is, is that you have inherent worth and value and that you don't have to force things and that you're not running out of time. Time is an illusion itself. So forgive yourself and allow things, forgive yourself for holding on and wanting something that is so important to you and something that has value to you in this moment for taking you away from your power or stripping you away from your power and forgive yourself for the moments when you've allowed anybody else to do that to you, okay? Yes, the next and last card is the child within. It says inner mother, innocence, gentleness, and tenderness, exactly. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a tiny baby that she's holding on to. And basically, with right timing and divine timing, healthy things will grow and survive and thrive all on their own. A healthy thing doesn't always rely on the efforts exerted by the mother or the creator. A healthy thing is just how it entered this world. And we cannot control the flow of healthy things. It is healthy to allow things to flow in the direction that they must, that they will. The best things that we can do as inner mother is to allow something to choose its own path and to allow something to choose its own destiny without stepping forth and smuggling it or trying to control in the way that it, that it grows. Okay, so I hope this reading resonates. There are plenty more readings where this came from. I do want to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you need me to work my magic for you, I can do that for you at BahadiLife.com. And um, until then, you guys, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.